to show here is just how you can preview and update textures and a little bit of how you texture in 3D Studio. I'll make a change in Photoshop and then we'll preview it in the Torque Show Tool Pro. So uh, starting with this character here, we'll go to Material Editor, grab a checker pattern, apply it, and just look at how that lays on the model. You can see that it's consistent all the way around. That's the first step to applying a a good texture is to get your UVs nice and consistent all the way around. So if I go to edit, there's my UVs and you can see that they've been stretched out a little bit on the edges. I've kind of used a, a normal front back type of approach. Um, if I go to tools, render UVW template, I can render out a template for use in Photoshop for painting the texture on. And uh, let's go ahead and go back to our character texture. To make an adjustment on this, to change the amount of drop shadow on these ribs, I'll go to Photoshop and uh, start off by just showing you what this layer does. So you can see drop shadow, inner glow, bevel and emboss, and setting are applied to that layer style. So what I'll do is go in and uh, double click on drop shadow and we'll just decrease the drop shadow spread from 18% to 16%. You can see it's more subtle now, more believable. Let's do a file, save as, and save that as a JPEG. And we'll go back to 3D Studio. As soon as I click in the screen, it'll update because it's using the same name as before. And uh, let's just take a look at that. For those that haven't spent much time in 3D Studio, right here in a diffuse map or under my maps, diffuse, there it is, astronaut one JPEG, and this is where I'm keeping it. So it's been updated, and we can spin it around and take a look at it, but it's not the same as being in the game environment. Being in the game environment, though, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get in and out. The Torque Show tool lets you see what the character will look like in the game, or any of your game art for that matter, without any of the variable lighting and environmental distractions you're going to have in the game. Let me give you an example. If I go to the project directory, uh, we can go to modify and add any folders we want here. I've already added one. I'll go to load DTS and click on the only DTS shape I have in that folder. There's my character. Um, this is what it's going to look like by default. It'll show you the nodes. I can use my left mouse button to spin it around. The nodes are useful to see how your uh, biped skeleton or your bone skeleton is stacking up. You can spot flaws this way, uh, maybe in your export process. You can pan around with the right mouse button. You can zoom with the mouse wheel. Um, I can load DSQs. Let me turn this back to uh, textured with no nodes. We'll go load DSQ and we'll run our run and we'll load our run cycle. Hit play. He's running. Let's do another one. Let's get the uh, root cycle. And we can go to root here. Now he's doing that. And uh, what's nice about these is you can see the character in action again in a simulation of the game environment without any of the distractions. So you can really see if uh, this texture is looking good enough to continue or if you need to go back to Max or Photoshop. Just a few other things about what's in this tool. I'll just show you the menus real quick. Different shading modes, different views display properties, light properties, mount objects, detail levels, material list, thread controls, sequence info, and shape properties. And the Torque Shield tool comes with uh, Torque 1.5. At least the last time I checked it did. And I'll go ahead and close that and minimize these. And uh, just to say that if you want step-by-step -step on how to get the art into the game, check out Creating Game Art for 3D Engines. Check out 3dcognition.com and check out GarageGames.com, the makers of the Torque Engine, uh, there's a lot of other resources at their site as well.